Humans are prone to error. And let's face it, some are just plain lazy. But imagine an industrial facility with tireless robotic inspectors using visual, thermal, and acoustic sensors to ensure accurate, round-the-clock data collection and smooth operations. Anybotics and Energy Robotics have teamed up to create the rugged and reliable Animal. Animal's robust design and IP67 rating ensure year-round functionality in all weather, including harsh, wet, and dirty environments. And that may leave human inspectors in the cold. Honeywell MicroSwitch Heavy Duty Limit Switches offer modular construction with various actuator styles, operating heads, and electrical circuitry options. Plug-in versions minimize downtime with quick switch replacements. Designed for demanding environments, these switches withstand numerous harmful elements and boast some pretty cool features that ensure reliability. Additionally, wiring is a cinch with their field-adjustable rotary heads, silver or gold-plated contacts, and self-lifting pressure plate terminals. Honeywell's MicroSwitch heavy-duty limit switches are perfect for a wide range of applications in demanding indoor or outdoor environments. Check them out today at mauser.com. Understanding switches isn't as simple as flipping one on. To help explain, we bring you David's Corner. Thanks, Andy. Today, we're gonna to talk about wire colors. And before you get freaked out, we're not gonna talk about the regulations that dictate the wire colors in different countries, different zones, different voltages, because that could just be kind of a mess. Instead, what we're going to talk about is the wire colors that we often encounter when we're trying to connect sensors and when we're trying to supply power to different devices. Because very often, these wires come inside these black colored jackets. And once we strip away the rubber outside of the jacket and we look at the wires that are inside, we have to make decisions on what to do with those standardized wire colors. Now, if we're supplying power to a device that's AC, usually something that you can plug into an outlet, it's of the 110 volt variety. And we might find two different varieties of those kinds of wire colors. This is typical for the United States, a black and a white indicating the live voltage and the neutral along with a green colored ground. Now for other pieces of equipment that might be coming from other countries or some standardized things that are built in the US, we can also supply electricity of the AC line voltage variety with a brown, blue, and green wire coloring scheme. The brown is the live voltage, the blue is the neutral, and once again the green, or sometimes green with a yellow stripe, is the neutral. Now the reason that that can be sometimes kind of confusing is because in our DC sensor voltage applications, like this small limit switch, we will also see a brown and a blue wire, just like we did with the AC voltage. But we also have a black wire, and there's no green wire. So if we just look at a wire bundle, we may not always be able to positively identify it. In the case of this switch, the brown and blue indicate one of the contact sets, while the two black wires indicate the other contact set. And that wiring diagram is printed right on the sensor. For transistor-based sensors, not the mechanical type, but optical or proximity sensors, we have a very common brown, black, blue, along with a white wire. Sometimes we don't see the white wire. The brown being the positive and blue being the neutral for the DC supply voltage, and the black being our output signal wire, the indication when you put your hand or an object in front of it. That white wire is sometimes used for determining the output polarity or by teaching the, wire, the sensor for a certain configuration. So we have to be very careful when looking up configurations for wires. In some other cases, like this networking cable, we see far more wires and they come in pairs. This is called a twisted pair connection and it reduces some of the interference that we find in wires. If you're ever in doubt, how do you go to find the information about the wires? Now in some electronics terms, we might go and Google search a term called a pinout. The pinout can often determine the wire colors, but in the case of industrial control electronics, we usually won't get very far by Googling wire colors or pinout. Instead, try searching for data sheets. Even though the supplier web pages may sometimes contain that information, a data sheet for a sensor or a switch or a power cable will almost always contain that information that you're looking for. So give that a search. Look for data sheet and specify the part number of the device that you're looking for, and most often that'll lead you down the best path for finding that information that you need for proper wiring. Andy, back to you.
difference between that kind of animal and this one is this animal integrates seamlessly with operational teams rather than trying to eat them. Animal also immediately alerts operators to anomalies during inspections. This ensures timely response and intervention, allowing operators to review data and solve problems in real time. Will robots take over industrial inspections or will human inspectors vanish in a more mysterious way? That does it for this edition of Automator's Edge. Be sure to check out our other episodes to stay updated and educated in the world of control automation.